Hey tubers. Uh, I've had several questions about where I am on the greenhouse, how the cracky bed's doing, if uh, I'm ready to start harvesting any tomatoes, things like that. But this is the starter plant area. Almost everything is out. I have a couple more cucumbers, okra, a straggler for a tomato plant that came off of a sucker. But I, I'll show you what I've done here. I've got some support for my cucumbers and tomatoes on that new Dutch bucket system. They're really growing. That is on the jungle juice right there, that whole system. In fact, the cracky bed is as well. This system is on the master blend with the Epsom salt and calcium nitrate mix. This over here. Is all grow bags and it is fertilized with nothing other than compost tea. And I have that set up as well. I, I was going to show you real quick. I do have some little cucumbers on this system. They're mixed in here. Let's see if I can find one for you. There's a little guy right there. These are divas, self pollinators. A couple little tomatoes on that too. So the jungle juice is producing over here these are not burning either I don't know why I don't have the burn on the plants over here so I don't know what that means to be honest with you the cracky bed has pulled out of its initial shock the cucumbers back there aren't doing so well they're really stunted this is not a good system to support that kind of growth but I'll leave them there see what happens kale it took a real hit when when it went dry over there when that collapsed still have not fixed that one and I don't think I will this is more of a cold crop kind of thing and uh, when the weather starts cooling off I'll get that one back up and running actually there's no running to it I'll just get it back up and going I did have a lot of blossom in rot on this system and I think that was from the jungle juice I did not put enough of the magnesium from the Epsom salts in there so a few of those suffered but the burn on these plants has stopped I mean it's still got some of the old damage because I didn't cut it off I decided to leave it but they do look healthier and I think they've actually taken a a real growth spurt they're taller that may just be where they are in their life cycle though so um, that's that that is a grapevine it's my wife's grapevine I need to put that outside uh, these in the grow bags are doing that uh, doing a whole lot better than anything to be honest with you there's some it's a pretty good sized cucumber there there's several of them in here these are sumpter cucumbers and they divas I got a couple divas over there and these are sumpters the sumpters are actually doing a little better as far as producing the bees have been coming in and taking care of that for me the tomatoes are going nuts on these plants there's no blossom in rot no disease whatsoever you can see the peppers these are yellow the banana peppers these are cayenne, lots of peppers all over them. Bell peppers are enormous. That's a big old bell pepper right there. There's just a bundle of them up in there. These are jalapeno. Quite a few of them up in there. These are some more bell in here. They just bundle up inside there. These are big Bertha. There's some big ones there. There's one. There's one. And these are. Uh, this is another bell. It actually says red bell. But uh, the most exciting thing in here, other than the fact that these tomato plants are just full of fruit, is that. That's my first red one. A lot of them blushing. But that one's actually 
in another day or two it'll be ready to as Bobby says make a tomato sandwich that's all for in here uh, no it didn't let me show you something over here okay told you I was going to show you how I get my compost tea to my plants I have an infusion system that starts in that barrel <clears throat> excuse me uh, that barrel is about 60 gallons uh, I think 50 six gallons I believe once filled to the top of compost tea I have a pump submerged at about that line right there all the silt from the tea if there is any would go down below it it's sitting on I have it sitting on a little stool that I've uh, set up in there the pump sitting there so it should uh, eliminate a lot of potential for clogging my irrigation lines if the silt goes to the bottom but anyway that pump pumps it up in through this black hose here right here and into my irrigation line now this is a manual process right now so I have to I have a valve to keep water from heading into my um, filling overfilling this when I'm running just my irrigation so what I do is I turn this on and I have to plug my pump up hold on okay for a sec. turn this on turn the pump on and it's pumping it's I've got a little slow leak there I got to fix and it's it's feeding the irrigation system which runs both ways it runs back over to my raised beds and it also runs back up and feeds the tomatoes and the peppers and see if I can show you that it's that it's actually dripping you see that feeding my plants it's actually pumping compost tea to all my organic vegetables even down and I hate walking with you I can show you one where it's actually easy to see. There you go. So that's how it works. Okay. <clears throat> you remember all this squash? I've been getting more squash than my family can eat out of that. Those nine plants right over there, but that that is a mess of cantaloupe and there are tons of cantaloupe laying in here it's drawing the bees in they're loving all the stuff the pollen but there's some pretty nice cantaloupes several of them I'm talking there's probably 50 of them in here like that there's another one and there's a pretty good size one there that one's about the size of a almost size of a softball but anyway that is all for what's in here I still have my it's hidden but those are my herbs God bless y'all go plant some dirt We'll see you next time.